Hi guys, it is April from Getting Hugo With It. Today I'm introducing a new series that I'm going to do and it's called Con Marie With Me and it is all about my bookshelves because oh my goodness, I have too many books. I really do and what used to bring me joy when I would go to my shelves and look at my shelves is no longer bringing me joy. Like I go to them and I feel like that's overwhelming. They are double stacked a lot of the time. And I just find it just too many books. So let's get into it. So I'm going to first of all insert what the before looks like, which is a massive set of bookshelves that just look a mess. They're not pretty anymore. These bookshelves are great. These are the books that I'm looking to unhaul. Um, so this whole series is very much inspired by Conmarie. Obviously it's called Conmarie with me. Um, and I have always found when I'm doing the KonMari method, books are the hardest part. Like hands down, hardest part. I'm gonna try and do it with you guys in this series. So I've got some rules to keep me on track. Um, I'm not looking to get rid of all of my books because I love my books, but there are some that just really don't bring me any joy. So the rules are, um, most of the time on my shelves, they're double stacked and that equals about, I don't know, maybe 27 to 30 books, which is just too many. So my rule is I got to bring down each of my little shelves down to 20. Must, must, must. I've decided I'm going to be nice to myself and allow myself to keep two for limbo and I'm going to create a limbo shelf. Um, and you know, as I go on in this series, if I majorly screw up and I get to one of my bookshelves and I'm not able to bring it down to 20, well, whatever the difference is, I have to go to my limbo shelf and start like pitching some books. And hopefully, eventually I'll go to my limbo shelf and go, why do I have any of these at all? So without further ado, let's move into my first go at Comrie, my bookshelves. Ah. So this first one I'm hoping isn't going to be too hard. I've got 24 books. I'm gonna go one by one and see what I think. So this first set of books are all thrillers. So this should be fun. First up is Emma in the Night by Wendy Walker. Um, this is about two girls who go missing and years later one of the girls comes back and the other one doesn't and it appears that she's lying about a lot of stuff. So we follow her and a psychologist who's trying to help her out. I have always been intrigued by this book. So I am going to keep this book on my shelves. Emma in the Night does spark joy with me, even just the cover. So, okay, keeping. Next up is Reconstructing Amelia by Kimberly McCrate. This is about a mother whose daughter dies uh, very suddenly she jumps off of the school roof or does she so we follow this mom who thinks absolutely not my daughter Amelia never did that and she has to reconstruct and find out who Amelia really was doesn't sound like she really knew her very well again this totally sparks joy for me so it's it's staying next is the wasp factory by Ian Banks this also sparks joy this is more of a horror. I don't know why it was in like the thriller category. category. Sometimes I mix the two. Um, but yeah, this is about a psychopath and we follow him as he kills people in his family. Um, and I, I really love getting into the minds of really psychotic people. So this sparks joy. It's staying. I only have four really that really need to go. If I can do more, that's amazing. But Next is The Perfect Nanny by Leela Slimani. And this is about two children. At the very beginning, you find out that they're murdered by their nanny. You go back in time and find out why and how. I've heard this is less of a thriller than it is like a psychological drama, but I am so curious about this. The Sparks Joy is staying. Okay, I've got my first one that I think I'm gonna get rid of. 
It's the Library of Mount Char. This is about a young girl who um, stays at this house and there's a man named Father there who takes care of everyone there. None of them are actually related, but he's missing and maybe dead. Um, and she wants to become like the new, I, I think the new person in power. Um, I, I love the cover of this, but when I look at this, I'm not like, yes, I need to buy, I need to read that immediately. So I am going to, I'm going to put this down. I think I'm going to unhaul it. I'm not even going to put it in a limbo. Like if I can get through this and not put anything in limbo, that would be amazing. So this is the first unhaul. Okay, next up is The Book of You by Claire Kendall. Again, I'm smiling. This definitely sparks joy. This is a stalker story um, about a woman who is being stalked by her coworker. He is freaking everywhere. And she actually decides um, that jury duty is the only thing that's like comforting her. It's her sanctuary because he can't come in, but he is there when she leaves. I'm just standing there waiting for her. Super creepy. I'm very excited about this one. So this is Stay. Oh, I just got this one. Daisy in Chains by Sharon Bolton. This is about a female lawyer who receives a letter from a man in prison and he's in prison for killing multiple people in brutal, brutal ways. But he's also very charming. And she kind of gets entangled in his snare. Like she really... He, he pulls her in. I don't know if she represents him or what, but I want to read this for sure. Okay, so I think I have my first book for Limbo, and that's Sweet Little Lies by Kaz Freyer. This is about a woman who finds out that her dad might have been involved in a murder. Um, that premise actually isn't insanely interesting to me. However, this has had a lot of buzz. Like People on booktube have liked this. Uh, it's just got a lot of hype around it, and so I want to keep it on my Limbo shelf just in case. So Limbo it goes. I've got another book for Limbo, um, I think. Either that or I am going to unhaul it. It's Never Let You Go by Chevy Stevens. I've heard great things about Chevy Stevens. This is about a woman who has been in a super abusive rela relationship. He gets sent to jail. She has... She moves on with her life. Everything's fine. She's got a teenage daughter. And then he's released and she begins to feel like he's very much stalking her. Like her home is broken into. People are threatened. Um, I think I'm probably going to put it into limbo. See what I could do. Um, I do love a stalker story. But I don't love... Um, domestic violence stories. So this is a very, eh, I don't know yet. Another book I can unhaul for sure, and it's Karen Slaughter's Faithless. Not because I don't want to read this, but because this is like smack dab in the middle of a series, and I'm slowly going to start um, collecting the Grant County series and work from there with like the nice British covers. So this is gonna go. Next is We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver. Now, I've started hearing some bad things about the author herself um, and her views. I don't know an insanely much about their those views. Um, it makes me a bit nervous, but I think if I can cut it down to, this is the only Lionel Shriver that I have on my shelves. I think that's good. Um, we need to talk about Kevin is about a mother who has a child who like murders a bunch of people. I think he kills um, some of his fellow high school students and she has always had this weird relationship with him and kind of has always known that there's been something wrong with her son. I find this fascinating so I want to keep this for sure. Next is Let the Right One In. Um, I've watched the movie of this, but I've never read the book. And this is a horror book about a little boy who becomes friends with a vampire, a little girl vampire from next door. They become friends and it sounds like he has a rough life to begin with and she comes in and kind of saves the day, but is also a vampire. It does sound really, really fun. And I think I'd like to keep this on my shelves because this would be a really good like Halloween book. 
Um, and the writing, I was just reading a bit of the writing and it was really good, so keeping that. Next is Lisa Gardner's Find Her. This is about a woman who is kidnapped and she's found, I think, months or years later and she's alive, but they don't know, the police don't know whether she's a victim or if she, or is she a victim at all. Um, this I'm gonna let go because I still am really not loving detective stories and there's a detective in here and I just, no thank you. So I'm gonna let that go. So The Woman in Cabin 10 is up next. This is by Ruth Ware. Um, I've heard very mixed things about this. I've heard that some people like it and some people absolutely hate it. And I just don't know where I stand on this. Um, I'm thinking of putting it in the limbo pile and then having to go through the limbo pile to just reduce it to two. Oh my god I think I'm gonna do that because I'm not sure oh yes I'm so excited cop town by Karen Slaughter um, I am absolutely keeping this I love Karen Slaughter so much this is about uh, a woman on the police force uh, someone is killing cops and uh, she's trying to get to the bottom of it. It sounds fantastic. Yes, keeping, keeping, keeping. Next is A Murder at Rosamond's Gate by Susanna Calkins. This is historical fiction and a thriller all in one. We follow Lucy, who's a 17th century um, chambermaid, and someone in the home that she cares for is killed. But Lucy falls under suspicion uh, she definitely is saying that she hasn't done this and so she decides okay if I'm gonna find out what happened I have to do it myself and she dives into the mystery and if this does spark joy I don't read a lot of historical fiction that also have this mystery thriller edge to it I think it's more mystery than thriller but I'd really like to read this so it's staying next is the queen of mystery Agatha Christie's the seven dials mystery um, I don't have any more Agatha Christie on my shelves. This is, I think, the only one. And it's really giving me And Then There Were None vibes, which I loved. This is about um, a group of house guests that decide to play a joke on this one person who sleeps a lot. And they have eight alarm clocks, or eight alarm clocks that are set to go off. Um, but when morning arrives and the first alarm clock is supposed to go off, the whole prank goes completely backfires. This one's a tough one because it's the only Agatha Christie I have on my shelves. Um, but I'm not like so excited about it. So I think I'm going to put this into limbo. Everything's going into limbo now. Oh my God, I have to go through the limbo pile after this. And then I'll kind of come around to it. Okay, The Last Mrs. Parrish, absolutely staying. This is about a woman who kind of latches on to another woman who has this amazing life um, and it really backfires if everything goes to hell and I really want to read this. I think Reese Witherspoon is actually turning this into um, a, either a movie or a TV series so I need this on my shelves and like what a good summer read. Yes? Yes. Okay that's day. Another horror classic Dracula by Bram Stoker. I don't think I can take this off of my shelves because it's a horror classic and I feel like I should read this. So this is staying. Disappearance at Devil's Rock by Paul Tremblay. I'm so excited to read this. I love Paul Tremblay. He is like my man crush. I seriously love this guy. This is a ghost story about a, a young boy, 13 years old, goes missing and the mom starts to think that she sees him in her own home or something like there's a ghosty kind of element to this uh, so this is staying 100% next is leaving Berlin by Joseph Cannon and I think I'm gonna get rid of this this is a historical fiction kind of crime story this is about a Jewish writer who flees the Nazis for America before the war and then McCarthy error comes into play and he kind of has to start working for the CIA and I just don't think this is going to be really for me. I don't think I'm excited about this so I'm going to get rid of it. I got to keep this. Elizabeth is Missing by Emma Healy. 
this is about an older woman who I think has dementia and she insists that her best friend I think died or is missing and what do you do is it real or is it um, in her head I've heard really good things about this so I'd like to keep this one okay. the wicked girls is next I think I'm gonna be getting rid of this this is about two girls who are accused of murder um, it sounds good the storyline sounds good but I really haven't heard very much about it and I think I kind of bought this on a whim and I shouldn't have done that so that's gonna go and last is a book that I'm going to keep it's The Little Friend by Donna Tart. Um, I've started reading The Secret History a little bit. I stopped reading it. I started and stopped. Wasn't blown away by it, but it's because the characters were annoying. I will pick it back up, um, but this story almost interests me more than The Secret History. Um, this is about uh, a little boy who is found hanging from a tree in his parents' yard on Mother's Day, his sister decides to try and find his killer. And that fascinates me. I love it when children go hunting for themselves to solve a crime. I really love that. So I'm keeping that one for sure. Okay, now I have to go through my limbo pile because I've got four there right now and I really want to reduce that down to just two. Oh God. So we've got Sweet Little Lies. We have uh, never let you go. We've got the woman in cabin 10 and we've got seven dials and I think I know pretty much right away which ones I'm keeping. I am going to keep Sweet Little Lies and I'm going to keep the woman in cabin 10 because I'm just curious about these ones. Also they're pretty. What well, that was interesting. They're both they both look exactly the same. Anyway, that's probably not why. Um, so that means I am going to ditch Never Let You Go, and I'm also going to ditch The Seven Dials Mystery. Oh, man. So I was supposed to get rid of four books. I ended up getting rid of, like, unhauling seven books, and then I have two for my limbo shelf. I'm very proud of myself. This is a good, okay, I'm very excited about this. Let me know in the comments below if you're really mad at me for getting rid of a book that you were like, no, I wanted you to read that desperately. Um, I hope that you're liking the series, first one in many to come, and I will talk with you soon. Okay, bye guys.